today we talk about server-side APIs. And before we can start to talk about that, we need to do, consider what is the way to communicate with these server-side APIs. And the most basic way to do this is something called an HTTP request. So you form a request and you send it to the server that is offering the API and the server is going to give you back the response. Now HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and it has two main variants, it's a GET variant and a POST variant. Uh, they are more or less equally found in, in APIs, like usually APIs support GET, POST or even both, it depends a little bit about what you want to, what the API provides. So if it's dealing with sensitive data, then it's most likely going to use the POST method. Um, if you are expected to cache the result, so maybe you want to call it again after some time, then GET offers this kind of a caching uh, feature. Basically, you call it again and server is not going to recalculate everything because your computer already has the result. This only works for things that don't change. Maybe you're going to query today the shortest path from Joensu to Kuopio. It's probably not going to change tomorrow either. So maybe you just cache the result via the, the GET request and display it tomorrow. Of course, after some time, maybe a new bridge is going to be built on the way and the shortest path may be different. So um, it depends when, when, when you want to use each of these. Then um, again, uh, post request is more secure because it doesn't remain in the browser history. Any get request is going to stay in your browser history, so anybody can read it from there. And finally, one big problem with the GET request is that it has length restrictions. So it means that if you want to have a request to the server that is very long, it gives to the server a lot of information to process, then GET will not support indefinite um, amount of size. For example, today we will try to send to the server a GPS trajectory and this GPS trajectory, I would say, I haven't tested, but I would say it doesn't fit in this, uh, in this using get. I don't, I actually don't remember what is the limitation, but it's fairly small. You can Google it. It's, yeah. Okay, now that we talked about this communication channel between a client and, and a server, we have to talk a little bit about the language. So, um, of course you can send the information in binary or you can make your own secret code for what the information is going to be. And this is what I'm, I'm often um, noticing from students. So, hypertext transfer protocol, it's text, it's text format, right? Let's say you want to tell to the server that I want to give it um, information about oneself, maybe about, um, about me. So I'm going to, to say that I want to give it a name. So, uh, okay, first one, I'm going to put the name of the person and now I need to separate it somehow. Maybe I put this kind of a hashtag there and then after the name I'm going to put the color of the clothes. So maybe I'm going to put orange. But I have blue pants so I'm still in the color section. I need another way to separate this. Maybe I'm going to use now this symbol just, just to separate just to separate colors here. And then, okay, now I move to something else, another 
something like this. So of course, I can make a string that I find these things. But now let's say, let's say that my name has the at symbol in it, or, or these kind of uh, um, some kind of. Uh, at some point, maybe I get the separator end, and then I'm going to to put one of the words. It's going to consider that part of this, even though you want to have one object, it may consider that it's two different objects. So these kind of solutions work, but uh, it's not foolproof. And also, who else knows this? You have to write a very big uh, documentation if you're going to make this kind of your own format for, for sending data to the server. And I'm mentioning this because most of the students try to do something like this when they work with more sophisticated data. But today we will see what JSON is. First of all, it is a standard format. It means that I don't have to teach it to anybody. People can read the documentation online and they will understand what it is. It can be used to represent many different types of data from numbers, arrays, objects, strings, more or less anything that you work with in a programming language. And it looks like this. And when I say easy to read, I mean both by computers and human. So you could serialize the data also in binary format, uh, not through the hypertext protocol, but in, in general. But then it's going to be ones and zeros, and you, you can't read it anymore, even though the computer has no problem with that. But this format, I can see here, OK, the name is visible, age is somewhere there. So I can read, actually, this, this information even, yeah, even by, by looking at the raw JSON form. And then, OK. And then support already exists. So we are building now web pages, web apps. And JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So basically, it's built into JavaScript. It also works in PHP built in. And many programming languages have libraries there. I prefer it over another popular one called XML because the formatting is a little bit smaller. So basically, the same information when you send it in JSON format, it's going to be less bytes than in XML. But uh, yeah, anyway, the fact that it's built in there and I don't have to write a parser for it myself is why we use it. And because most of the server APIs support it. And actually, all of the ones here support it. And these are all APIs that we are going to experiment with today. First of all, we will look at the Google API. And I will focus mostly on the server APIs from Google. So Google Maps, we will use it. but. Uh, tomorrow. So today we focus on what Google gives you on the server. We will see at least two things. Uh, geocoding. You have some coordinates. What is the address there? Or you have the address there. What is the coordinates? The first one is actually reverse geocoding. Anyway, so uh, that's important. Uh, you might not know, but getting the time zone is quite a difficult problem. So Google has also a solution for that. You have a location, but what is the time? Because you always have these offsets, like uh, how much from this uh, prime meridian time. And then does the country use this daylight savings? Does it not use daylight savings? How would you implement this without calling something that has a database for all the countries, all the policies? And yeah. Then we look a bit at the weather. So Open Weather Map is an API for finding the weather in 
different places on the, on the planet. We will check also some things available in MOPSI. A few of them we saw in previous lecture, but uh, today we try at least one of them in practice. And then I will present OSRM. It stands for Open Source Routing Machine. It gives you directions. So let's say you come from Yoensu to Kuopio and you want to have uh, exact roads and where to turn and, and so on. This gives you that. And I have to mention here that Google also gives you that. <clears throat> but um, you will see that the Google API is sort of limited in free use. Um, okay, that sounded bad. Google doesn't really have many limitations, but it does have a purchasing requirement. So if you want to get it for free, uh, you can look at, at this one with unlimited calls. Being open source, it also means that you can install it on your own server. So you have unlimited number of calls. And um, it also means that you can look to see how it works if you're interested in these kind of uh, algorithms. And finally, we will look at the Overpass API, which is something from OpenStreetMap. Um, it reads OpenStreetMap uh, data via its own query format. So it has some format of writing queries, and you can search different things available in OpenStreetMap. These things can include anything from restaurants, cafeterias, shapes of buildings, uh, shapes of streets. Actually, this streets uh, would be useful for this uh, Pac-Man Go uh, project because if you have the shapes of the of the streets in the bounding box, you could get uh, you could find out where to put those dots on the. All right, but I think we, this is what we will cover today. Um, today we start with a small program written here. It is in demos uh, APIs directory. And the first example is going to be in a file called ownserver.html, which has here some API requests and responses and uh, this kind of uh, pre object that is just going to contain output from these APIs. And the um, only thing that I'm including is something called httphandler.js, which is a file that I wrote before uh, this course and I don't want to explain it too much so uh, I We'll just look at the code here. Now, if you test the page, it's just going to be a blank page. We don't have anything at the moment. And we want to do our first HTTP request. And it should use JSON format. So to do an HTTP request, we need first a server to request from. So I wrote one, a small server, just as just for a demo, for you to understand how it, it works. But uh, we will be accessing other more complicated, more powerful servers uh, later. So now um, we are going to write a function for adding two numbers. And we will not, hopefully, we will not use the plus operator. So we want to ask the server how to add the numbers. We just consider it as a toy example that it's too difficult for us to do. And for that, our server has some documentation here. So any kind of server is going to have some address where you can call it from. It's going to tell you if it supports JSON or not. In this case, it expects it in a variable called param. And then what kind of 
calls, I can ask it. I can ask it to add numbers, and I must give one number in variable A and one number in variable B. So this is one example of the server, and we can look also at the code, but it's not that interesting. So I look at the parameter from uh, at the value from this param. Uh, variable and I check to see if the post variant uh, contains it. If it doesn't then I also look in get. So basically this is going to be a get and post um, API. It's going to support both of the variants. Now after that it's going to instantiate this server class and at the moment it's only request type that it supports it's add numbers and it will call this function which takes the values of A, takes the, the value of B and this is the thing that actually adds the numbers so it's going to be on the server and on the client side we will not touch this addition operator okay so let's see now back on the client side. Oh yes, so this HTTP handler.js is, is a file that <coughs> contains four different functions. We have a function for performing a get to a given URL, so this URL is the parameter. We have a function for doing a post. But as we will see, the get URL contains also the information that we are looking for. The post needs a separate um, parameter for the information. Now I really have to point out that these two functions on the top are deprecated. Do you know what deprecated means? Solid. <coughs> okay, obsolete, not in use. Actually, they still work, but they shouldn't be used anymore. So they are at this stage at the moment, but it can also mean exactly what you said. Um, the problem with them is that these functions return the response that is coming from the, uh, from the server. And this is a bad thing, because it's going to wait they're going to wait until the server gives you the response. So nowadays web pages have many functionalities. For example, on Facebook you can see messages from people, you can video chat with other people while at the same time posting something. If you're going to use these functions for doing any of those functionalities, the web page is going to stuck. It's going to block and it's going to wait until your chat message comes back or an, uh, until you post something, you upload the, vid the photo, for example. And that's very bad user experience. It means that he can't do anything, he's going to be frustrated, he might refresh the page and then do it again. Because he still wants to do it, but he's frustrated. So because of that, these two other functions on the bottom are doing the same thing, but asynchronously. This means that when the data is available, we send a callback function, another function that we will write. We will give it to be called with the result from the, from the request. So in this way, this function now doesn't return anymore anything. It doesn't have a, a return anymore. But when the data is available, it's going to call this callback. And the same for post, which now has three parameters. First the URL, then the parameters, and finally the callback. OK, so now let's try to use one of those functions to add our numbers. So our function for adding the numbers is going to be simple. Uh, I just have two numbers there. And first I want to form this uh, parameter value. So 
it's going to be a JSON object with request type. Now these I'm taking from what I know that the API is, is supporting, basically. Request type is going to be uh, add numbers and I need a value for A and a value for B and note here that request type is a string but A is going to be something else at the moment it's this attribute from here it's going to be a, a number format okay and now I need a URL which I know from here so my API is going to be in this PHP directory and then server.php. So like that. And I'm going to call the HTTP post async function just to see uh, how it works and maybe we have time to experiment with, uh, with a little more after that which again is going to need the URL which I just defined and now the second parameter is going to be the, the parameter values and we will see why later but we have to write here param is equal to and now I'm going to make this JSON object, I mean this JavaScript object, into a JSON string. So the JavaScript has this built-in function to do that, uh, json.stringify, and I'm going to give it the parameter values. And then the last parameter, this callback, I'm just going to write it in line here, even though I recommend not to do that. So this function is going to be called when the result is available. Okay. So what am I going to do when the result is available? I'm going to just put the result in the output. So the output has an inner HTML value. I will append because now it's now it's empty and I can do that with um, let's just put the string output that is coming from the server and see how it looks like. Finally, uh, we need to call the function. So let's say we want to add numbers fifteen and twenty five. If I didn't make any mistake, I think we can refresh this page and server says 40. Okay. Now, this response from the server is a string, right? Let's say you just want the value, the 40. To do that, you take this string output that the server is giving to you and Let's define a, ob a variable for object and now I'm going to call the JSON parse function which which I give this string value and now from the object from the JSON object I take the value that the server gives to me so in this case 40 and I'm going to put that one in the output there. Just to make it a bit nicer, I'm going to say um, output string equal to, and here I'm going to say a bold value of a plus now I'm going to concatenate to the plus symbol plus b and that's 
I think, all that I want to have involved. And then equals to, yeah. And now I'm going to put this output string So I just want to have the full equation there inside this output. And refreshing the page looks like that. That's it, more or less. Um, of course, you can extend this API, make it more complicated, make it do more fancy math, math functions. Um, to make it subtract numbers, it would be very straightforward. We just go on the server side and make a subtract numbers uh, function here and the response is going to be here. I'm going to do the subtraction. And I need to add it as a supported request type here. Otherwise, well, let's not add it there. And go back here to the, the main, main function. I'm going to copy the add numbers and have a subtract numbers. And here I want to show a minus b is equal to something. So in that case, Let's put also a new line um, after the add numbers so that they are not on the same line. Unknown operation. So you get unknown operation because I had the server tell you that. In case you don't know the, uh, you don't know how to do it. So. Now, if we add the subtract numbers as a possible request type there, and I'm going to save the file, refreshing here knows how to calculate. So a very simple um, idea for how to make uh, client-server communication. Having said that, we will move to something more complicated. I will try now to give examples of all these other all these other servers that um, yeah, that I presented before and I hope I have time for doing all of this. To speed up a bit the process we start with this new file other services.html so let's move there already now other servers.html okay that's example of browser caching uh, huh. and here uh, we will open this secondary JavaScript file so the first one is the same as before but the second examples.js is going to be the same actually as before with the add numbers here but um, I have some hyperlinks that you might find useful and I will find useful that we will look for from the other APIs from Google, from the weather, from OSRM so that I don't spend time uh, looking for what is the name of the Google server for geolocation or what is the name of the weather server or what is the name of the routing server or so on. So a little bit of uh, data I wrote here beforehand and I'm still calling the add numbers here with some uh, values <coughs> and I still have the locations of Johan 
to Usniemi and Kuopio from last, last exercise. Right, so I think we can begin with the Google APIs. You can check all these links better yourselves, but we will go and look a little bit together now. So Google APIs are here at this address. You will have a lot of uh, documentation and a lot of examples usually for how to do things with Google. And if you will press this uh, get started um, button, then you can start by selecting what you want it to help you with maps, routes, like the OSRM that we will test later, or places, which is kind of like this overpass that I, I uh, present to you later. So um, you have to choose that, and after you select the product, Google starts to ask you for billing immediately. Now this was not in Spring. <laughs> uh, that's why if you read that book that I recommended at the beginning, it's not going to say about this billing option now. It's, it's changing all the time. Um, even though that book contains a lot of information about how Google works, how OpenStreetMap works, and, and so on. So the uh, world is constantly changing, and you just can't write a book on something. It's, it's always going to improve. Now, what does billing mean? For free, Google gives you some a limited amount of calls that you can do. For example, you want to find out addresses of 1,000 locations today. I think 1,000 or 5,000 may be the limit. After that, you can't use it anymore unless you pay. Before, you used to have the option to make a billing account. So you can just use um, the free version without any kind of credential information. But in spring, uh, or actually summer, maybe late summer, they added this as mandatory. And they give you 300 or 200 or 300 euros per month to spend on their API. So basically, it's still free to about the same level. I mean, it kind of equivalates to, to what was before. This 300 euros is enough for testing purposes, but they hook you in with this, uh, with this um, um, personal information there that you have to add in. Because if you have the information already there, it's very easy for you to click pay when later you want a better uh, service from them. So it's, it's <coughs> this kind of gimmick, I, I think. But anyway, it's still free in, in a sense, and you can use it with, uh, with no problems for testing purposes. And even to make some small apps, like uh, Mopsy. We don't have billing, uh, billing in Mopsy, and uh, with the number of users that we have, it's still functioning OK. Right. So you can try that out. Um, and after you get it to work, you will have access to this console where you're gonna have listed a lot of um, a lot of information for example what API's you are using and how many requests you are you're generating and basically looking at the at this page you can also find out um, credential values. So these credentials are important when you're calling the API. And by that I mean especially this key value. This key value is going to be needed by most server APIs. We, will, we see here in my code that I have a key for Google I have a key for this weather API. Uh, the others have option to have a key, at least this OSRM has, but uh, it also offers service without it, even more limited. The need for the key is that 
they know that that key has done a specific number of requests and they can uh, choose if they still give you or, or not depending on how much you're using. These keys are actually public so you can look at it there. Uh, this is just for LAMAT purposes. You can even use it in, in the projects if you want but if all of you are going to use it it means that it's going to deplete more rapidly so if you need something you might as well make your own uh, account there. Okay, um, but now I'm going to want to try to geocode the solution. <coughs> so I'm going to Google the Google geocoding API because I find it much faster than than um, than by um, navigating the web page there. And here it has a get started page with samples uh, of requests and responses uh, and, and, and we are going to use this variant. So we are going to geocode um, knowing the latitude and longitude and expecting to get the address as a response. So let's see how we could do that in the, in the code. I'm going to write a function for um, Google geocode a point. So our point is going to be to Sniemi or, or something from above. And we need to use a key, an API key, and I already wrote that one above for, for simplicity and we will also <coughs> need a um, URL so that one is also the Google server from above but this <coughs> is going to be actually a GET request so what makes it a GET request is that all of this information like the key, the latitude and longitude information are going to be part of the link so uh, I'm going to then perform this HTTP get asynchronously information with our URL. And then again, I'm going to write an inline function for what to do with the result. So this one has the parameters, will have the parameters already in the URL. And the function for the return is going to be here. And it will look like that. Okay. And maybe we want to print it just like that for now. So. I'm going to copy this code from here and I'm going to say the inner HTML is going to be this string output that is coming from the server. Okay, now the, prob the problem at the moment is that this is not going to give us the address because our URL is only the Google server. It needs to be uh, we need to append to it all of these different properties, like what is the latitude, longitude, what is the key there. So I'm going to do that by appending to this the following strings. I want to say that I will geocode in JSON format LAT LNG equal to so this is again their syntax and if you want to learn it more you can read that web page <coughs> that I <coughs> looked at briefly and then we append the um, latitude of the point comma longitude of the point and key equal to key. I think that's it. 
And we can try to do now Google <coughs> geocode of tools near me. These locations from here, this is a coordinate. And hopefully it will work. Okay, uh, well, something happened. So, <laughs> so, a lot of stuff happened. So, what is this? <laughs> oh my. So, this is JSON. And this is JSON giving you a lot of information in a structured format. Uh, I recommend using a service like this um, JSON parser online from France. Yeah. Um, you can paste it there and then you can look on the right to see the objects in a more pretty pretty format so for example we have results we have address components and now we have um, the long name of the address components <laughs> So these are these are different levels. So this is street number, root, some administrative area. It's just a formal name of how Finland defines divides these places. Postal code. Now here we have street address, and this street address is going to have. A formatted address here. So this one looks like Yoki TS6 71200 to Usniemi, Finland. So now you know exactly where those coordinates are pointing to, not just that it is in Usniemi. So uh, we can use this information and now uh, parse it. Like we did before, we get our object. So now we have an object that is looking like, like that. And to get that value for the address, I'm going to say I want to get the object and from that take the results <coughs> attribute the first result you may have multiple of them depending if uh, if that address is known by two different ways it's it's possible and uh, and that and then we take that value that we found there called formatted address hopefully i'm writing it correctly and now i just want to print here that address value. Let's see if it's a bit better. Okay, so now it looks a little a little nicer here. Okay, so that's two Sniami here. How about since we are here we get also Kuopio and Joensun. <laughs> Minakantin Katu and Koski Katu in your answer. Tomorrow we will try all of these things on a map, so we will get an even better idea of where they are. But today we will stick with a lot of these boring text outputs. Right. Okay. Now maybe I skip the Google Time Zone example because it's kind of uh, boring. It's similar to this and we had enough of Google, maybe for now. Let's move to the open weather map service. So again, this open weather map is a, is a server API that just gives you the weather. It also has a price, but it does offer a free, um, the same feature basically. It gives you a, a key that you can use for a limited <coughs> number of trials 
and after you have that value exceeded, you must pay if you want more, more of that. And here you can get the current weather, you can get forecast data, like how it will be in the future, and a lot of documentation about how the API looks like, and JSON is one of the supported formats. Now, going here on, on each of these, it gives you a lot of different examples of how to do it and how, how the result looks like. So if you are interested in getting this kind of information, then you can read this more, but the lecture is not about how to get weather data, it's how to call different kind of APIs. And um, yes. And basically, uh, you get the same kind of key, but you have to sign up for, for the service first. And, and then prices are also here mentioning what is free uh, and what different, yeah. <laughs> what different services cost. <coughs> okay, but I have a key. <laughs> um, I made an account there and through the documentation I found out that the server for the weather is this one. So you can read if you are more, uh, more if you're interested there. And let's write now a function Maybe we call it get weather. Okay, let's not work with coordinates, let's work with uh, strings. And this is going to be city name. So I mean this one. So you input the name of the city and you get the weather at the given location. Of course, it has also many other ways that you can query it, like by geographic coordinates, we could easily do this, but uh, just to try something else instead of working with coordinates all the time. All right, so our key is going to be our weather key, this time defined above, and our URL is going to be the weather server and this is also going to be a get request I might as well copy the example from Google and, and, and. I always print first just the raw value that is going to come from the server, and then I will consider parsing it or displaying just the information that I'm uh, that I am interested in. So I'm going to put all the string output there, and the parameters that I need to give here for this type of request is going to be something like question mark Q is equal to, and then the value of the city, which is going to be our parameter from there, plus and app ID is equal to key. So it's a little different type of request than <coughs> Google has, but the same components are here. The location, in this case, is going to be a string format and the value for the for the key which must be given. And let's get weather in Kuopio. Okay, I'm going to save. And as <coughs> I didn't make any mistake, going back to our test page, and it doesn't work opening our console. Okay, some problem with insecure HTTP request, HTTPS. 
this is going to be a common problem. So because we are using a secure network and we're trying to communicate with some server which may not be secure, um, it doesn't work. If I remove this S from the HTTP at the top, this shouldn't appear anymore. And now we get something very long again. Going back to our uh, French parser, And I can read it almost already here. So I see scattered clouds. Is that correct, Quopia? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I can read the weather from looking now at the. You notice that this weather attribute here has an array with one element inside the array and inside this element the first element of the array I'm going to take the description just to print it out so basically uh, instead of writing everything here I'm going to reactivate this code that we used from Google before and modify it a little bit. So our result is going to be in the weather, again the first element from the array, and it was description. So. Okay. <coughs> Scattered clouds, addresses, and our addition. Now, here's a thought. Why isn't the Google request happening first? Because I'm calling the weather last. So why, why is the weather response here? Callback? Yeah. Callback? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if we look now at this debugging console in the network, in the network tab, make sure this is uh, selected here. I refresh the page, I'm actually going to see all our requests, the ones from the Google, the one from the weather, and the one from the server that we made here. And note that after I refreshed, the order changed. Google started to be faster for some reason. Maybe it's doing some caching or some smart things on the background to give me my, my response quicker, but it's actually even faster than our own server, which is upstairs. So I'm not even sure how that's possible. And each of these can be inspected further. For example, you can look at the timing here to see how long it took to get the information. Um, you can also check to see things like how much data was transferred. Very important if you want to warn your users if, uh, if they are downloading too much data, for example. Okay. Let's put also here the name of the city, uh, not just... Okay, and instead of address, rename the attribute to whether it's more meaningful and put also the name of the city, so... Okay. That's better. Right. Moving on. OSRM. So this OSRM is another service. Uh, written in C++. And again, it has demos and documentations quite, quite a lot here. It basically does this. So you have two different locations. <coughs> and it doesn't work.
can also debug their page. Uh -huh. Okay, they probably changed something there uh, with the HTTP and HTTPS again. So they prefer this not secure uh, variant, I think, or, or no. No, they have some problems. <laughs> Okay, I hope the API doesn't have problems, but this demo page seem to, seems to have some issues. Um, so anyway, it should give you the, the route between the two places. Okay. And documentation is here and it actually doesn't require any key but the number of uh, requests that you can do are <coughs> very limited so they are very limited very few of them that you can do uh, we actually have it installed also on CS server so we can do infinitely many of them but today I'm going to demo it from this this page from this page so let's see what kind of we are going to be looking for this kind of driving route so I'm going to look for a driving route from two different places and, and, and you can also use it for other things like the nearest service and This table service is interesting. If you give it some locations, maybe 10 locations, it, it's going to give you a matrix with all the pairwise distances between the points in that matrix. It could be important, for example, if you're working with the traveling salesman problem. And you must find all of them as soon as, as fast as you can. Okay. So let's make a new function called oops, here. Navigate using OSRM. And I'm going to have two points here, start point and end point. And we need to do more or less the same thing from here but with a little different values. We don't need the key anymore. And instead of the weather server, we're going to call the OSRM server. And, and it's again a GET API, which will need the start point, latitude, longitude, longitude and the end point, latitude and longitude. So to this URL, I'm going to append, yes, I'm going to append start point LAT. Oh, no, for some reason, LNG. Let's see if I made a mistake here. <coughs> It's very strange. So I'm just more familiar with coordinates and, and where they are, but uh, this is longitude first. It's a bit uh, rare. Uh, and here the string format, so longitude, latitude. So let's not make that mistake because then we get some strange effects. Plus comma to separate the values. Uh, start point LAT plus semicolon plus 
endpoint lng plus comma endpoint lat more or less it's like that and i have to tell it that i'm looking for geometries in geojson format this geojson format is actually a standard for representing geographic information using the JSON format. If you don't do this, it's going to give it to you in some compressed form. So trajectories tend to be very long, and uh, the default, I think, is going to give it to you encrypted somehow, and you need to decrypt it with some other kind of functions later on. OK, but this should be it. And let's try to print again this um, string output here. See how it looks like. I'm going to comment again any kind of parsing that we will do later. And let's say we want to navigate from Tuusniemi to Kuopi. OK. Now back to our page, refresh it. And there you go. I'm lucky today, not many errors. So we have roots, wow, eight points, roots, uh, first array from roots, geometry, and I think coordinates is what we are interested in. So all of these coordinates are going to be turning points or parts of the road network where you have to make a choice. It's going to be a bit hard to see and visualize now, but uh, tomorrow again we are going to take all of these examples and we will try to visualize them on a map. So tomorrow's lecture is going to be all about maps. And now I'm going to take from here just this raw information. So, yes, so basically I need the coordinates object, which is going to be um, roots, the first array from roots, geometry, and coordinates. to format it in some nicer looking string, not just this raw JSON format. So I'm going to, okay, I'm just going to do a for loop. Through all the coordinates. And in this output string, I'm going to put the first coordinate, which is going to be zero and the second coordinate which is going to be one and I want it on a new line okay and I just want to output this going back to here it's not correct. Um, okay, again, if you want latitude, longitude, they give it to you in reverse here. So this is longitude information. And of course it's correct, but uh, if you're gonna make the assumption that the first one is the latitude and you're gonna plot it somewhere, it's gonna be maybe Kazakhstan, I'm not sure. I, I got this error some long ago and uh, Okay, so we have OSRM also down. Whew. I'm 
getting tired. So. Let's check this overpass. What is that? So overpass API. Um, hmm. Not very useful examples here. Maybe. Okay, and documentation is going to be in uh, in this kind of Wikipedia form. But you can Google it. I prefer to Google whatever examples you're trying to make. For example, overpass query uh, restaurants. And then all the documentation seems to be in, in this, side, this type of uh, Wikipedia. And this type of request This is post boxes. Okay. It takes a little while to learn how to use this API. Uh, documentations and the type of uh, the way that you write the queries is not straightforward. But uh, you can experiment with them, and they have this server service called Overpass Turbo where you can paste some kind of code on the left, this type of, uh, of request that they offer, and then run it, and then it's going to output on the right whatever was queried here. In this case, it queried, I think it queried uh, all these kind of, um, well, at least, yeah, the way components and the raw data is here it's actually XML format okay so it's XML format and um, I'm sure you can get it also in JSON format somehow but I don't remember how to do it here but that's not that important because we already, I mean, we have it installed on our server and configured for JSON. So that is actually how I'm going to demonstrate it. The overpass server is actually part of Mopsy. So let's see how that one will work. Okay, so example is going to be query for pubs. And and then Okay, maybe it's best we look to see how the this type of query looks like. So I have here sample query in XML form. So the query type is going to look for amenities of the type pub. And this um, bounding box that we are going to give here, the north, south, west, and east, is containing Yoensu and Kuopio and everything in between. So idea would be to find pubs in this kind of region. And uh, yeah, let's see how it works. Um, OK. So we are using the overpass server.
Okay, and on Mopsy server we have to use the post version of the API. of the HTTP request and okay we go to the overpass server the URL is there but I need to give it the parameters so parameters are going to be query equal to query and now the function for the uncomplete so it's here Okay, so let's see how the string output is going to look like if this works. I have to say I didn't practice this one too much. Uh -huh. Oh, it's not here because I didn't call the function. So. Okay, I have something. Uh, wow. I have something very huge. It may be that this Franz JSON parser is gonna. Okay, it struggled a little bit, but it's here. Um, so attributes, notes, okay, description, Kelloniemi somewhere there Kaivuri pub okay Kunari Elina and open at summer interesting uh, I don't really know okay Yoki Asema has even website here so there is a lot of information in OpenStreetMap and um, we are now querying all these different pubs there. Yes. Okay. I think that parsing this information may take more time than I'm willing to spend, but I will do it at home later, so you can have working source code. I'm going to just leave it as this ugly string here for now and try to move to other examples and because I wanted other examples to have locations like the, the overpass pubs I'm going to just copy here some point locations to be used with the next examples so we have some points, they are actually in, in Yoensu somewhere, but you don't have to worry until tomorrow about that when we see them on the map. And Mopsy has a few functions that are quite nice. First one is you can compute the convex hull. It means the points on the border of this set of points. So it will be a hole, a minimum uh, area that contains all the points. And we can write that like get convex hole points are the parameters. And we are using this points server. So also installed on actually it's an OM OM Mopsy part, which is this uh, game, this orienteering game. So the point server should be used and it's going to be a post API. Mm -hmm. So URL is the point server. The parameters are going to be again like in our sample before param is equal to and then hmm. should have started with the documentation from it but um, 
bit pressed for time. Okay. This is very similar to the example that we did before with the request type. Must be set to convex hole because this um, uh, points API is able to do more than that. And the second attribute is going to be points, and that one is coming at, as the uh, argument there. So yeah, let's just display the output, the raw output for now. And okay, so we have the points, and let's get the convex hole for these points. requests. <coughs> These too many requests is coming now from our OSRM API. So OSRM, the one without the key, uh, we reached the too many requests limit. So it's enough maybe to, to uh, test a little bit, but if you want to make a real application using that, you need to move it to your own server. And we have done that for Mopsy and it's working quite well. The limitation is the data. So OSRM must have a database, like all the streets in the world. We have limited to Finland uh, for two transportation modes. So we have uh, walking everywhere in the world, but car and bicycle is only in Finland because it doesn't fit in the memory of the server. So just so you understand that these APIs are really important. You can't take them and put them on your mobile phone and do the processing just on your device. So many times it's doing very complicated thing with abundant amount of data, and that's why they exist in the first place. Okay, but our response is here. So this is the, the convex hole, I think so. from the points and eight points around the convex hole. So the convex hole, eight points, and here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So five of these points are inside and eight of them define a, a, a border around it. <coughs> it's hard to visualize, but that's what tomorrow is for. All right, very similar to this get convex hole, the points API also offers TSP. So get TSP function is going to calculate the traveling salesman uh, tour for these points. Let's try to call it. Okay, so the longer one, this one, must be the TSP because TSP has to go through all the points. Convex wall had less than, than, didn't have all the points. So TSP just brings me back the same points, but it gives them to me in some order that is optimum. So if you want to visit them, this is the order that you should take. First one, first one ends with 577 latitude. So, okay, it's not here. I think it's doing some kind of um, rounding also of the numbers. Six, zero, eight, six, eight, four, three. Oh, yeah, so it's this one. So this seems to be the, the one where you should start at. And the other one, yeah, the map example. Tomorrow is going to clear up a lot of these things. But still, uh, we need to have things implemented that we can visualize better later on. Okay. 
Uh, what else do we need? We have these. Ooh. I think we went through most of the things that I wanted to try. Okay, maybe we have time also for this transportation mode and then we can move on. I mean, finish today. So this transportation mode API in Mopsy is described here. Basically, you give it a raw trajectory like the one here and it gives you these kind of uh, segments, if it has any segments, of uh, types of movement. And um, here we display it also on the map, but today we are just going to get it in, in raw format. So the API, like APIs usually are, are described here. What kind of um, JSON attributes are needed, the output, and I even have some kind of sample code here, which actually may be quite useful. I haven't checked this, but... Um, okay, so to segment the movement, I need the movement. And in this IO directory, I have three routes added, three GPS trajectories. So they look like this. Uh, they have latitude, longitude, timestamp, and then on and on for 1085 points. We will just use this trajectory as, a, as an input. And yeah, and first let's read this uh, route. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to copy this code, <coughs> uh, almost all of it, because this post is, uh, I don't need it anymore. Let's see if we can work with the copied code. Actually, let's just paste everything and, and see what happens. Okay. And, and then this one. I will move that part to the main function. So that function calls the begins the call. So process the root from text file. It is in IO directory and it's called root.txt. Let's just see if it if it works like that. So going back here. Okay, well, some root is here, so it did load this root txt file, but did it call any, okay, it did call, so it called the API, the transportation mode API, and it says that it starts with walking, and then the walking points, and so on. I don't know if anything else is... Okay, bicycle is also here, somewhere. Right, but uh, whatever we are doing, let's check it out before we, comp we end today. So, the function process root from text file, it gets a file as parameter, it reads the uh, it parses the text, so it takes every new line and they, s they are separated by space, the coordinates inside uh, each line. Latitude, longitude and time component are there. So we are creating a root object. And then we are calling the compute transportation mode function, which is here. It's calling the segment root. Uh, request type from the transportation mode server and processing response it only puts it oh it puts it in the console so I could have seen it here so it displays it into the console 
but I don't want it to display into the console. I want it to display uh, in our output there. So let's do that one modification. <clears throat> yeah, so instead of just going for the pure JSON string, I'm going to put all the movement types, like walking, bicycle, or whatever. So bear with me for one more minute. So I have an object for the response, and from there I take the server array I will print out as a string the type from each segment. So from segment i, the type. And I will separate them by comma maybe. Just, yeah. I really hope this works. And here, I'm placing the output. Okay, walking, bicycle, stopping, walking, bicycle. So the root actually has one, two, three, four, five segments. It might may be the same example from here, but I don't remember. Yeah, maybe walking, bicycle, stopping, walking, and bicycle. It may be actually this root. Uh, it would make sense. So it looks like that, but we will do the visualization, visualization tomorrow. And I will polish a little bit this page so that the examples are more readable there, but only the output. So once more, sorry if it was a bit unclear today, but I wanted to get a lot of examples out so that you can see how different APIs are called. And with the, a lot of examples, we will continue to work tomorrow with the map. So the more data we have, the more we can use map techniques to show the data on the map. So do study this, and um, tomorrow, if you understand this, then it will be very straightforward lecture.